Hello, I'm Kathy Davidson. Doyle Davidson and all of us here at Water of Life would like you to join us as we minister the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus, which is the power of God. We're going to begin this service with worship. But before we do that, I'd like, you to, I'd like to ask you to lay aside all your cares, everything that you've been thinking about this morning that's been bothering you, your relationships, your family, your job, etc. I want you to lay it aside for a moment, and I want you to worship God, and I want you to get your heart on Him so that He can minister to us. My girls, let's go.
Let's pray. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Let the power of my Lord be great. Father, again, again, you did it once, again. Let the power of my Lord be great. Let the power of my Lord be great and grant us repentance. Open our eyes that we can see. Open our hearts like you did for Lydia, that we can attend unto the things which are spoken. Turn us from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's turn to Romans 6, where we were last week. We're going to begin from there. I'm going to read from verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. This is what I talked about last week. For the wages of sin is death. The word of God cannot be broken. It is from everlasting to everlasting. The world will end, but the word of God will go on. It cannot be broken. The wages of sin is death. You commit sin, you die. You die. But, but, that's the next word, but. But the wages of sin is death. But. Now, I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians 5.21. What about that but? Thank God for the word but. 2 Corinthians verse 5, I mean chapter 5, verse 21. For he... He, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin. Who is that he? Let's go back up to verse 19. To wit, that God, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. That's what I'm doing up here. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. Who is the first he? For he. The first he is Jehovah. The first he is our Father, our Heavenly Father. For he has made him. Who is the him? Jesus. Now, look at the word made. For he, for Jehovah, has made, has made Jesus sin has made him. He didn't volunteer. He didn't wish. He didn't ask. It said he made him sin for us. For he hath made him sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. For he has made him, for he has made him to be, and that word really isn't there, he has made him sin. He has made Jesus sin. Consider that for a moment. He has made him sin who knew no sin. Who knew no sin. Now, he has made him murder. Who knew no murder. He has made him adultery that knew no adultery. He has made him, he has made him a whoremonger who knew no whoremonger. He has made him a liar who knew no lie. Do you see what that verse is saying? He has made him a child beater who was not a child beater. He has made him a fornicator who knew no fornication. He has made him a sexual pervert who knew no sexual perversion. He has made him an unbeliever 
who knew no unbelief. Do you fathom what that is saying? What are you? What are you? What did you do? What did you do? Well, guess what? What you did, Jesus took. He became. Let's turn to Isaiah 53. We're going to go there. I'm going to begin in verse 1. Who hath believed our report? I love that word, believe. Who hath believed our report? Who has trusted in? Who has adhered to? Do you know that in that word, believe, there is, in that definition of believe, the word to see is not in there. You can't see it. To believe does not mean what you see. Believe means to trust in, to adhere to, not what you see. Do you know the word feeling is not in that word belief? The word feeling is not in the definition of belief. It's not. I'm a grammar teacher. It's not in there. Feelings have nothing to do with believing. Now that we know that, let's go on. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form. He hath no form, no image. Why? Why does he have no form? Because he made him sin who knew no sin. He made Jesus sin who knew no sin. Well, guess what happens to sinners? The wages of sin is death. Jesus became sin. The wages of sin is death. He hath no form. That body was marred more than any man. Every bone out of joint. Why? Because he was a murderer. Because he was a child molester. Because he was a whoremonger because he was an unbeliever, because he was a liar, because he was a thief, he was an extortioner. He was fearful. He was fearful. That's what he became. Guess what happened to the body? Everything that sin does to a body, Jesus took every bone out of joint, marred more than any man. Why? Because what you did, what I did, went on that body went on that body. He hath no form. Let's go on. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Like I have said before in my radio messages, Jesus did a noble act by dying, laying down his life for us, dying, going to the cross, going to hell, and rising from the dead. But he did not die a noble death. He died a death of disgrace. He died a death of punishment. He died a death of despisement. He died an accursed death. Why? Because the wages of sin are death. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of pain and acquainted with sickness. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. See? No noble death. As it, as it were, our faces from him, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Look at this next verse. Surely, surely, surely. This is the word of God that cannot be broken. Surely. He has borne our sickness and carried our pains. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But, but. The wages of sin is death, but, but he was wounded for our transgressions. Why was his body, did have that punishment on it? Our transgressions, our transgressions. And not the little ones, just the little ones. Well, you know, I lied to my boss last week. Well, uh, I wasn't nice to my sister. Well, I kind of talked back to my parents, not just the little ones. Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin. The big ones. Amen. The big ones. I shared a story this week about Corrie ten Boom and her 
uh, concentration camp, um, what was it, officer, the, her guard, murderer. Jesus died for that murderer. Jesus died for the child molester. Jesus died for the adulterer. If you take a moment, God had me do this once. Think of the worst sin that you could think of. Think of the worst sin that you can think of. Think of the worst sin you can think of. It was on that body. It was on that body. And it took it from someone that, that did it. He took it from someone that committed it. And the Father made him sin. Made him sin. He who knew no sin became sin. Thank God. Let's go on. That he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement, the correction, the punishment for our peace, our welfare, our prosperity was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity, the perversion, the sin of us all. Laid it on Jesus. The Father made him sin who knew no sin. Is there a sin bothering you? Look where it went. Look where it went. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before our shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. What happens to an adulterer when they die? What happens to a murderer when they die? What happens to a wife beater when they die? The wages of sin is death. Where do they go? They go to hell. They go to hell. Jesus was made sin who knew no sin, that he, we might be the righteousness of God. Where did Jesus go when he died? He went where every whoremonger and adulterer and murderer and liar and unbeliever and self-righteous person goes. He went to hell. Why? Because he was a murderer and an adulterer and an unbeliever and a liar and a fearful, self-righteous, fill in the blank, fill in the blank. Where do they go? They go to hell. Jesus went to hell, cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Verse 10, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Goes right back to the father made him, made him sin. And he has put him to grief, made him sick. When thou... When thou, thou, thou is Jehovah. When Jehovah shall make his soul an offering for sin. Make his soul an offering. The father made him sin who knew no sin. He shall, when he shall make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. That's the resurrection. How did the resurrection come about? The answer is in the next couple verses. He shall see the travail of his soul. His soul. He shall see the travail of his soul. Why? Because he was paying for our sin. He was paying for our sin in hell. Paying for it. I shared this on my radio program. When God was ministering to me the gospel and giving me the revelation of it, I was reading these verses one day, and the father said to me, Kathy, he said, Jesus didn't carry your sins in a suitcase. He didn't carry them in a suitcase. You know what the word, uh, one of the words here means pregnant. Pregnant. 
pregnant, full of. He carried them in his soul. It was as if he had committed them. And as far as the father was concerned, he who knew no sin became sin. The father made him sin. He saw the travail of his soul in hell, paying for what you and I have done. Paying for what you and I have done. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. Shall be satisfied. I think those are some of the most wonderful words I have ever seen. Shall be satisfied. Have you ever been hungry, really hungry, starved as we would say, and then you eat a good meal and you are no longer hungry? Well, guess what happened to the father? He no longer, he was satisfied, satisfied with the punishment, with the correction, with the payment that Jesus made for us. He was satisfied, satisfied. You can't make somebody that's satisfied any more satisfied. They're satisfied. It's enough. It is enough. Jesus' payment is enough. It said, he saw the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. What happens when the father is satisfied? The next word in verse 12, therefore. Therefore. The father was satisfied. Therefore. Therefore. Will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. That is the resurrection. What happened when the father was satisfied? Every sin. The murderer, the whoremonger, the adulterer, the liar, the unbelieving, the self-righteous were all forgiven. They were all forgiven. It was enough. It was enough. The father was satisfied. It was enough. And Jesus was raised from the dead. Not only was Jesus raised, but we were raised with him because all those sins that we carried were on Jesus and the father was satisfied and the father forgave it all. The father forgave it all. You look at that word and you say, satisfied. I don't know if I believe that. I'm not sure about that. Turn quickly with me to Hebrews 10. Amen. And I want you to go to verse 17. Let's, let's start in 16. This is the covenant. This is God speaking. Our Father, Jehovah, that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. And look at verse 18. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering. No more. You cannot pay for your sins any more than they've been paid for. The Father has been satisfied. You cannot, I'll say that again, you cannot pay for your sin any more then it has already been paid for. The Father has been satisfied. When you purchase that car and you pay that last car payment, do you pay any more car payments after that? No, because your loan has been satisfied. Unless you are really crazy. <laughs> well, the Father has been satisfied with the sacrifice of His Son. I have a great testimony to go with this. It came up to me in the shower today. There was a very close friend of my family's that got into big trouble. I mean big trouble. They were in the military. And they got to a point where the pressure was so great, they decided that they were going to end their life and they tried to commit suicide. In that process of trying to commit suicide, they got arrested because they were doing things that were illegal. They put him in a place 
that um, we couldn't get to him at. Nobody could get to him. And they had decided that they were going to perform um, a procedure on him that we all knew would have been his death. Would have been his death. They wouldn't, you know, I love the military. If you know me, you know I love the military. I come from a military family. But there are wicked people in everywhere. And there are wicked people in the military. And I was, we watched where we could not get to him. And they were going to do this procedure and we were going to lose him. We were going to lose him and there was no hope. And you know what? Because of what he, des because of what he did, he deserved it. He deserved it. But you know what? I know his sin has been satisfied. I know this right here. I know that Jesus bore what he did on his own body. I know that when Jesus died, he became everything that this person had done. And I started crying out to the Father. And you know what? We tried to get his commanding officer to go and stop what happened. And the commanding officer told us, he said, I can't do anything for you. I'm sorry. We tried to contact lawyers. They said, we can't get to him. They won't let us in. Sorry. We tried to get to him, and he couldn't answer us. We could not get there. But you know who can get there? Amen. Do you know who can get there? I was praying one evening here in the, in the church. We were worshiping. The Spirit of God came up in my heart, and I said, Father, and then I looked at the situation. I said, you can't have him. You can't have him because of this. You can't have him because of this. Not because of what he's done, because he deserved it. But you can't have him because somebody already paid the price for it. You can't have him. They had the gurney in the room, getting ready to put him on it. And I said, you can't have him, devil. You can't have him. You know what? 200 miles away, the, uh, his commanding officer walked in the building, walked in the room and said, what? You can't have him. God put it in his mouth. You can't have him. And they got him out and they could not perform the procedure. And you know where that man is today? He's, he is well and he is home. And he is without, the, he, he didn't go to jail. The father delivered him. Totally delivered him. Why? Because of this. Do you know there are things in us that need delivered? There are things in us that need to come out because we are in bondage to them. And in a couple moments here, I'm going to join Doyle. Davidson, as he comes down here and he's going to pray. And I and Kathy Mai and Terry Brown are going to pray with him. And I'm going to invite you up here. And we're going to take care of some of these bondages because they've been taken care of. They've been taken care of. Now, if you would like prayer, if you would like to get rid of some of these bondages, I welcome you to come up now. And we'll pray for you. Hallelujah. Thank God. Bless the Lord. Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Praise God. I thank thank you, Father. I get thank Father, you. in the name of Jesus. 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 Name of Jesus. Amen. Every knee shall bow. In the name of Jesus, 
every knee shall bow. Thank you, devil. Thank you, earth. Thank you, below the earth. And every tongue shall confess Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now, turn to God's people loose. Amen. Say, turn Amen. Turn them loose. Amen. Now, turn them Amen. loose. Amen. Your chains are broken. Amen. You have no authority over these people. Now, let them go free. Amen. Let these spirits, these fellows, these imaginations come out. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let every unclean, every unclean and hateful birth come out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let every death come out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Out in Jesus' name. Let every soul i 
was done in my heart. You brought life to me, a child of darkness became a child of light. And when my soul was so Eyes, 
saying is no one worthy to go. For no one in heaven, no one in earth was worthy to open the scroll. Then one of the elders said, John, don't you weep? It was all part of the plan. And there in the middle of God's glorious throne, hallelujah, there stood a lamb. And they sang Jesus is your Lord, hallelujah.
Lord of Lords. He is the King, the King of Kings, Prince of Peace, everlasting peace. Crown Him with glory, Almighty God. It is finished. Christ is come. It was written on God's Son. For behold, the Lamb has fulfilled God's plan. And it is finished. And He has just We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas, 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. <laughs>